Hello everybody this is Nikhil how are you all so it's been a long time uh, me being live on a youtube platform so actually today in this video i would like to discuss some uh, topic which is not about any subject or it's not about engineering a basic uh, thing usually generally students to ask me while preparing for their examination because i am mainly associated with this competitive exams field people are preparing for competitive exam keep on asking me sir what is the strategy for this exam how do we prepare for this exam now i am in so and so stage and how do i plan my preparation these many days are there for the examination what is the strategy that i should be following so the fact is that there is no single strategy or something like a magical strategy that is suitable for everybody in fact everybody should design your own strategy and asking for strategy to me or watching for some strategy videos in youtube is basically a waste of time that is what i personally feel why because your success strategy is like your fingerprint it is unique for everybody because it is not the same life that you are leading that a ranker leads or maybe the life conditions are different for everybody so you cannot have a unique strategy which can help you in cracking any examination but today i would like to explain through a most fundamental principle of physics how you can apply that uh, that fundamental concept to your exam preparation it's not just for exam preparation you can apply this same concept for everything almost almost every walk of your life but since i am mainly concerning with students preparing for some examinations i would like to explain this topic in this way how it will help you okay so the topic that i am going to discuss is about power and energy so before getting into power first i will discuss about energy so what is energy tell me sir what is energy so what is energy energy is nothing but simply it is a capacity okay it is a capacity to do something to do work or do something else that is what a fundamental meaning of energy means so how when do you have capacity more capacity when you have more mass so i can say energy is directly proportional to mass this thing everybody will agree any student of physics will agree that energy is directly proportional to mass greater the mass greater will be the energy for example you have kinetic energy how do you define kinetic energy half mv square so kinetic energy directly proportional to mass next when you talk about potential energy what is potential energy mgh potential energy directly proportional to mass again more the mass more the size more the content more the energy okay now let us come back to electrical engineering in electrical engineering we will see where do we find some energies for example let us say energy stored in an inductor if there is energy stored in an inductor how do you define energy stored in an inductor half l into i square now you see that energy depends on a physical object something called as l inductor inductance is a physical object isn't it so inductance is given by this formula you see n square a permeability by l now you see inductance is proportional to what a cross section area and it is proportional to the number of turns that means greater the mass greater the size greater will be the inductance greater the inductance greater will be the energy similarly we will see energy stored in the capacitor half cv square now energy is proportional to the some physical quantity capacitance so c is given by epsilon a by d where a is the area of the plates that means more the area more the mass more the area more the dielectric you place more the dielectric more will be the epsilon and more will be the capacitance more capacitance more energy that means ultimately what i mean to say is capacity is directly proportional to mass okay so that is what energy means so energy is mass mass is energy like that you know all these things okay so that is about energy now we will discuss about power what is power so power so and another thing is energy is a scalar quantity you know this energy is a scalar quantity that means it just has only a value no direction it has a value it has a number that's it nothing else now when you talk about power i can regard power as a vector quantity it is a vector quantity because it has got a power and a direction we will see how so first we will design uh, first we will decide what does the power mean now you are having energy you are having capacity to do something isn't it you are having capacity to do something now power defines how fast you are able to do that how fast you are able to utilize that energy to do that work that is what 
power means so power is defined as rate of doing work or rate of utilizing or transforming energy so you are having energy so how fast you are able to transform it or how fast you are able to utilize it with respect to time so power is something with respect to time that okay it is not bothered about the capacity per time per unit time how much energy you are able to pull out or give in or transform whatever it may be for example let us take an electrical machine is there we will talk about electrical machine let us say this machine is a motor okay it is a motor so to this motor you are giving electrical energy as input and what will give output it will give mechanical energy as output so how fast with respect to time it can transform this electrical to mechanical will decide the power rating of this particular motor so power rating of that motor decides or it it actually gives you an information how fastly it is eating the electrical energy and how fastly it is giving mechanical energy output so that is what the power means so power means the rate of utilizing or transforming energy okay so that is what power means so power is a vector quantity because it is having a direction because power may be incoming or outgoing or simply power absorbed or power delivered so you are having these two things but whereas can you define something like we have defined for power like power supplied or power delivered or power absorbed no energy is energy if energy is said to be moving it has to be combined with power so when you view energy alone energy is a scalar quantity it has got just a number it has got a value okay so this is what power and energy means so up to now everybody must be clear about what is power and energy i am not talking any rocket science it is a very basic thing most of you know more than me about power and energy but i would like to apply these concepts to a real life scenario so the first scenario i am going to take is for example let us say you are preparing for examination now you have prepared a lot you have gone through a lot of material you have gone through a lot of mcqs many bits you have practiced number of test series you have practiced and you have uh, given a lot of examinations you have gone through a lot of notes many textbooks everything is done but you go to the examination you know everything you know everything all the 100 questions you know but something has gone wrong you messed up the exam you come out weeping out are i know everything i have studied everything then why it went wrong this is the common scenario happening with 99.9% of the students appearing for competitive exams you prepare really well you prepare really very good you prepare from a very good way or in a proper strategy but ultimately doesn't work out for you but what is that aspect happening in the examination even though you have prepared well that is making you a non ranker and somebody a ranker so what is that difference between a ranker and a non ranker to understand that concept you have to realize one fact about competitive exams what is that fact means so generally what is the time given for you in the examinations you will be given with some 2 hours of time maybe some exams give you 3 hours of time so generally the examination time would be some 2 to 3 hours let us say for the same examination which make you stood as a non ranker i am extending this time to some 4 to 5 hours let us say then what will happen everybody will get the rank everybody will be in the ranker only so what is that factor that will decide a ranker and non ranker is the time so time will decide it if enough time is given enough time to think enough time like 4 to 5 hours is given obviously everybody will get good marks why don't they get you tell me it is him who is going to properly manage or properly utilize this given 2 to 3 hours only is going to get track so here the involvement or here the main crux is time time is the main crux okay so now you have accumulated lot of knowledge you have accumulated lot of subject in the due course of preparation you have prepared well you have lot of content in your brain lot of content lot of information is there lot of information is there lot of content is there so that is your energy your knowledge is energy okay your subject your information basically i can tell energy is nothing but information any information is an energy any subject is an energy okay now now what is that factor that is coming extra in competitive exams time factor that means whatever subject you have studied now you have to transform it where you have to transform it in the examination hall into your exam paper you have to transform your total energy so 
what is your power how fast you are able to transform your knowledge your information into the exam paper so that is your power how fastly if you are seeing a question how fastly you are able to arrive at the right question right answer how fastly you are able to access the information that is stored in your brain that is what refers to your power in your energy power in your examination what we have to concentrate is to improve your power improve your power not energy you have got energy everybody will have energy i am sure 100% any student preparing for competitive exams will have a lot of energy there is no difference between a last ranker and a first ranker but what everybody will lack is power you need to develop your power so don't you think there is a way that we can develop power yes there is a way and uh, another thing that i want to highlight people keep on searching for new material new coachings and all these things even though they have taken coaching they have learnt any many things they still go for coachings or they still go for some guidance they still go for some new material why you have to go you have got an enough energy there is a lot of en- information in your mind there is a lot of energy that you have stored only that thing you are lacking is power you have to concentrate on power not energy don't waste your time on energy that is what many students will be doing they know the subject they keep on writing notes again they keep on going through the same notes they keep on going through the same textbooks don't build information improve your power i will tell you how so before getting how i would like to give another example another example i would like to give you let us say i hope most of you might have seen this movie called as rocky i probably don't remember whether it is rocky 2 or rocky 3 i guess it is rocky 3 where rocky balboa he will get into a ring and actually he will fight with a big wrestler who is very heavier than him and he will uh, you know you know he will knock down that guy so let me tell you let us say there is bruce lee how is bruce lee very thin very thin and he is very light in weight let us say there is a very heavy fat guy like me okay compared to all uh, in dimensions physically everything i am much much larger than bruce lee that means my mass is more 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 as compared to bruce lee's mass let us say the total energy i have in my body corresponds to my mass let us say i am having 1000 joules of energy inside me bruce lee is very thin his mass is also very less so lesser the mass lesser the energy obviously he cannot have not more than 100 joules yes that is the truth now let us say if i keep a fighting match between me and bruce lee who is going to win tell me bruce lee will win why bruce lee will win why bruce lee will win because of course i accept that he is having lesser energy than me i am more stronger i am having i am not stronger i am more powerful i am more energetic than bruce lee but still bruce lee can defeat me why is it so why because this fellow bruce lee he can okay he can expend or he can deliver out of his energy 10 joules in a one second in one second of time he can spend 10 joules of energy 10 joules per second but whereas myself i can spend only 1 joule per second 1 joule per second so what is the power of bruce lee power of bruce lee is 10 joules per second that means it is equal to 10 watts and what is my energy 1 watt my power is 1 po- 1 watt and his power is 10 watts i hope you got the point that means he is able to utilize the energy that he has got it might be little only but he can do it fastly his power is more i am doing it very slowly my power is less obviously in that one in that one second only whereas i am resisting him with 1 watt he is giving me punching me with 10 watts obviously i will fall down then what is the use of having all this 1000 joules and proclaiming oh i got everything i have no everything that is the difference between you and a ranker most of the students suffer from here only okay you learn a lot of thing you are having 1000 joules but you are not able to deliver it with within time within time so what is that thing will help you to increase your rate of delivery of power rate of delivery of energy or rate of access of information the thing that will help you to increase your power is practice nothing other than practice so even though you have learnt many things what you have to do is start practicing how do you practice take the previous question papers take say mcq sources keep on practicing keep on practicing for example let us say now i want to defeat bruce lee now how do we how do i reach to that state that i have to defeat bruce lee 
what i have to do i should do exercise i should increase my power i should increase my stamina i should increase my stamina by doing running cardio exercises and all these things more the practice more the practice i keep on my on my body my body will get habituated to spend the energy because see uh, always human body will behave in a such a way that only uh, only if it is required it will act only if something is required for example let us say i am going to gym and i am lifting weights when i am lifting weights what happen my muscle keeps on growing up why your muscle keeps on growing up because now your body has sensed that this fellow is having some work with lifting lifting weights now i have to support him so i will put on all the muscle for example now you leave all this lifting activity and all it will easily go down why because it will act only if it is required similarly when you are running and when you are doing all these things your power will obviously increase why because now your body has realized that you require fast delivery of energy in the same way you have to tame your mind you have to tame your entire body that this fellow requires fast access to this information so when you keep on accessing that information okay in a systematic manner properly you know don't uh, again go back to energy don't collect new information whatever information now you have collected is sufficient keep on practicing that information the more you practice your information more you keep on touch with your subject the more fast it will be coming out the inertia will reduce the mass will reduce or the inertia time lag will reduce your power will increase so that is the underlying principle that i would like to explain using power and energy concept i hope this video might have given you some good information or some good motivation and uh, i wish you all the best thank you for watching